semi final, three more couples go head to head to deliver their best menu to 75 diners against the clock. We just don't really understand why you didn't know that you didn't have enough lamb. I am really disappointed. Three restaurants under one roof. We can wait because we are behind, yeah? All competing for one place in the grand finale. I'm regretting picking half the stuff that I did. <laughs> it's all going pear shaped. It's a catastrophe. AM and three couples have left their own restaurants behind. They're on their way to compete in Marco's Battle Kitchen. If you want to win, you have to dig down deep. You have to have that instinct to drive yourself forward. First up is engaged couple Sarah and James. This is very different to anything we've done before. The challenge is immense. We've just got to hope that things go right and, and we can rise to the challenge. It's tough. We're going to have to work very, very hard. They're up against best friends, Sam and Hamza. I'm confident in my cooking, I'm confident in my food, I'm confident in what I do. And uh, to be honest, I hope both of us can pull it off. The final couple is son and father-in-law, Ivano and Alan. We're expecting to win. Yeah. And we're expecting to cook some absolute magnificent dishes that all the guests will go, wow. battle kitchen they have to apply a strategy because if they don't apply a strategy then they'll never deliver 25 meals consistently well welcome to my battle kitchen this is without question the most difficult competition. 75 diners to feed, 25 each. Three courses in one hour, 45 minutes. It's not just about food, it's about service as well. So the importance of the front of house is enormous. You will have to work as a team, because if you don't, we'll all implode on you. Good luck. Before the diners arrive, the couples have four hours to prepare their menus. OK, let's have a look what we got. Marco has specified that each couple must cook lamb with sweetbreads, red mullet and haunch of venison for their main courses. Start with your longest job first and you work your way to your shortest job. Do you get me? He's allowed them to choose their own starters and desserts. Four hours isn't long, so chef and front of house will have to work together. But with so much to do, Marco has given each couple a kitchen hand to help with the basics. We'll peel this button squash, yep. and I'll tell you what to do with that. Please. Okay, yep. The couples must butcher their meat, fillet their fish, and pre-cook as much as possible to have any chance of being ready for service. A tough task when you've got Marco breathing down your neck. In almost one hour, we've peeled a few carrots and a few sticks of asparagus. Working in the kitchen together is a huge challenge for all the couples, especially Sam and Chef Hamza. Fish, mate. <laughs> yeah, if I never have to fill another fish off this, I will be happy. Hamza is preparing one of his mains, red mullet with shamula, a Moroccan marinade served with vegetable couscous and a herb dressing. The last time you used tweezers, you was plucking your eyebrows, I think. <laughs> Every front of house here has kitchen experience except for you, Sam. Yeah, well, you should be ashamed right. of yourself. It would help right now, but, you know. Yeah, right now it would be perfect, <laughs> mate. Should have brought somebody else with me. Then we wouldn't be who we are. <laughs> Hamza and Sam are best friends and run El Cantara, a Moroccan and Spanish restaurant in Soho, London. We had a history class, and when I walked into the class, he was wearing these terrible lime green jeans. And he stood out, and I thought, I should sit next to him because nobody else wants to. The truth of the matter was, he had a couple of girls sitting next to him, and I thought I'd join him. I felt sorry for the guy. There we go. It's a little bit tough. It's good to work with your best mate. We get on, we have a laugh, but it's it's testing sometimes. It's testing. I don't have any of my own brothers, so yeah, he's he's my brother, adopted brother. Hamza and Sam, they've been together for a long, long time, but they have to really think about what they're doing. It's not very good, is it? 
You wouldn't want one of your clients choking on a bone now, would you? No, Michael. If somebody chokes on it, it'll probably, I'll end up choking him. <laughs> Sam isn't the only front of house struggling. Ivano, my arm is 60 years old. I don't think it can keep moving at this right. speed. That's it. Ivano and Alan are son and father-in-law. They run the old bakery in Lincoln. I'm the boss in the kitchen, that's for sure. Nobody touches that. He's, well, I would say, out there. Alan thinks he's the boss anyway. We're making things that. <laughs> We're all in charge in our own departments. Alan! Oi! Relationships with in-laws aren't always easy, but try running a restaurant with one. Ivano and I have some uh, daily conversations, uh, some of them on a reasonable level and some of them slightly heated. I have to be the peacemaker and sort them out. Tell them off like my children, really. <laughs> a little bit longer, Alan. It needs a, a tiny bit longer. Ivano, he cooks very well. Alan's going to have to up his game. He's going to have to work hard. He's going to have to work harder than he's ever worked in his life. One hour. That's how long you've had to play with a piece of venison, make a bit of pastry, peel a few asparagus, prepare some red mullet. Badly. Oh, this is <laughs> right, isn't it? Wash a few quails, crack a few eggs, and cook some potatoes. Oh, all right. This, this is brilliant. Is that a button? Yeah. There we are. Yep. Yeah. Chef James runs the Ebury in Pimlico, London, with his fiancée, Sarah. James and I met when he was in the kitchen. I was front of house, and obviously we got together. I could tell straight away she was a very talented person. I entered the Young Waiter Award, so I was pushed into that by James. He brings out the best of me, and um, I, I won. She makes me want to do better when the person you love most in the world is standing on the other side of the pass and is basically judging everything that she's got to take to the table, I can't let her down. James, classically trained, worked at the Ritz. They've just got to hold it together. They've got to have their strategy. They've got to communicate. Your pastry is rock hard. What's the recipe? Um, 1.2 kilos of flour, six eggs, uh, 400 grams sugar, 400 grams butter. It's hard. Hamza, James, Ivano, two and a half hours remaining. The chances of them being finished, ready for service, slim. I'm running out of time. Coming up... Wow, look at this. Ivano has a meltdown. It's a catastrophe. So I've got three, four, seven starters. And Hamza and Sam's diners are left waiting. We've been here about 20, 25 minutes, and um, we haven't seen the food yet. In tonight's semi-final, three couples are preparing for service. In just two hours, 75 diners will walk through the doors of the battle kitchen, expecting an amazing three-course meal served in style. The couples are competing for one place in Marco's grand finale. This is the honeycomb. Stay still, don't go anywhere. For dessert, oh, father and son-in-law, Alan and Divano, plan to serve chocolate delice and pistachio mousse with passion fruit semifredo and honeycomb crisp. And I think the thermometer was also the wrong temperature because this is way too, way too hot. Wow, look at this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. Honeycomb. I'm, uh, I mean, unfortunately, the thermometer didn't read the right temperature. I, I saw it going temperature. brown, I should have stopped it. So now I'll try to do it again. Let's hope Alan doesn't do that to you. Well, Alan is doing very well so far. He is doing well. <laughs> Earlier today, the couples had just one chance to discuss their menus with Marco before they were set in stone. Marco was worried that Ivano had too many elements to his dessert. Three desserts on one plate. I think I can still do it. If you want to go down like the Roman Empire, then don't change your menu. Reluctantly, Ivano decided to drop his semifredo. I've decided to change one element of, of the dessert to make my life easier for me and for Alan and for everybody else. 
When they met in Leeds, Marco also had his doubts about Alan's front of house skills. Do you always serve your food on cold plates, Alan? We do not serve food on cold plates, no. But just a day for me. Genius. So Alan's done his homework to prepare for tonight's service. Since the audition, I've been uh, fortunate enough to uh, uh, visit a Michelin star restaurant and uh, watched how they operate. And so hopefully all of that is helpful for this evening. But in the kitchen, Ivano's still struggling with his dessert. It's not meant to be, is it? Oh, it's all going pear-shaped. So I think perhaps it's just the honeycomb crisp yeah. that's gone pear-shaped. Yeah. A second disaster with his honeycomb means he'll have to serve his dessert without the crisp. It's a catastrophe. One hour left. In the purple kitchen, experienced chef James is falling behind. Sarah, we don't have enough pans. It's all got to go in the same one, and I just have to keep moving it around. Right. We've got to go quicker than this. Yeah. We're going to have to work very, very hard now to try and catch up. It's starting to look like it's going to be a bad day. And in the gold kitchen, Hamza is making his couscous. But that's not all he's making. I'm really, really messy. <laughs> so I'll do a clean down for, before Marco sees me. I'm sure he's around somewhere. Oh, shit. I know you hate it. If I hate you made it. less mess, <laughs> you might have more time. Yes, chef. Sam and Hamza had planned to serve pastilla a Moroccan pie made out of phyllo pastry for two of their three courses, but Marco had other ideas. You have two pastillas on your menu, starter and dessert. Why do I want the same twice? But the tastes are very different. I'd like you to change one of them. Either keep the pudding one or the starter one. Your choice. Oh, bollocks. I'm going to do something like a brood quails. Starter. Okay, nice, unusual. With yeah. what? Uh, boiled quail egg, just cut, just open. Oh, that would be quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. But Hamza's decision to cook quail involves a lot more work, and there's only one hour of prep left. Are these ready to be boiled? Not yet, not yet. What have you got to do to them? Clean them. So you're going to get rid of all those feathers? Yes. Are you going to trust them? No, I'll give them a good clean as well and clean it out. Now, when I say trust, Tie them up with string. Oh, sorry, trust. No. No, that's fine, because I'm going to open them up anyway. You're a spatchcock, then? Yeah, that's what you want to call it. What do you call it? I would just say butterfly them. Well, they just fly to the customers. <laughs> you can see the pressure's on. They're struggling. They're almost there. They may get over the line. And I think it'll be a very exciting service. I think it's going to be good, actually. I'm looking forward to it. In one hour, you'll be out of your misery. The couples only have the exact amount of portions to serve their 25 diners. Classically trained James is already thinking strategically. <laughs> so you need to push venison, which I've got a lot of, and mullet, which I've got a lot of. Obviously, lamb's a really popular option uh, in restaurants, so uh, it's going to be a hard sell to try and get to pe people to go for, for the venison instead, or the fish. Another part of their strategy is to keep their menu straightforward. James, tell me about your menu. Okay, we've opted for a cold starter to help with the service. Clever. All very simple. Tell me about your blueberry jelly. Just a garnish on top of the meringue. Pretty. Awful. <laughs> I'll just go for the lemon meringue top myself. Bye-bye. Um, You're definitely not going to do the blueberry jelly. No, I think the oracle was spoken, and if you don't listen to him, you're an idiot. So. Ivano, Hamza, James, less than five minutes. If I trip with this, it's game over, all right? So just please just back up. Less than one minute to go. Time up. Knives down. Do not move anything. The four hours are over and none of the couples have completed their prep. But Sam and Hamza have the most to do. 
75 specially invited diners have arrived. From food bloggers to supper club hosts, they're well placed to deliver feedback to Marco. I'm looking for an exemplary experience um, from, from uh, the taste of the food to the look of the food, from the front of house to the chefs. There has to be an incredible communication between both to make it all work. I'm looking for the unexpected. Service is about to begin. This is where the fun starts. 75 diners, 25 each. One hour, 45 minutes. They're my eyes, my ears, and my palate. And let's not forget one thing. Two of you will be going home. One of you will join me in my grand finale. Let's service begin. My name is Sam, and I'll be serving you this evening. Table for five, please, come this the way. The service of their lives has started, and the couples have one chance to wow their guests by whining and dining them. Do you want to try the red, sir? Yeah. Proving they have the skill to make it through to the grand finale. Alan, it's not a bus stop. They're waiting. Five people? Yes. Thank you very much. Take, take a seat. Second table. Venison and mullet. Some smoked nuts and olive serve for you. There you go. They're actually white anchovies. They're very fresh and light. Sure, I apologise. I always know when you're stressed. What is that, Michael? You go quiet. One red mullet, one venison. Three lamb, one red mullet, one venison. Oh, I've got five lamb. No, yeah, that's five lamb. With only six portions of lamb available, Sarah knows she's got to push the other dishes too. Yeah, they're, they're all delicious, um, but dish? I'd say the venison. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Right, I'll go with the lamb. <laughs> <laughs> the lamb. Lamb? James and Sarah's cold starter needs little preparation. A salad of English garden vegetables with truffle oil. So while Sarah takes the cold starters out, James can crack on with the mains. How many lamb in order? Uh, I think it's five at last count. Could be wrong. How's it going, chef? It's going uh, all right, thank you. Are you happy with your pasta dish? Yeah, it's very good. The flavor for me, everything is in the flavor. Not the cooking? Well, of course the cooking. There's a lot of cooking involved. Alan, nice pasta. order up, Alan. Alan, I need some orders. So, three venison, James, on that table. One mullet, one lamb. Well done. Four, four. Thank you very much. Right, come through. Right, Alan, orders. Alan's just not pushing the orders through quickly enough, and Ivano's worried. I need, I need orders. Right. Please. Thank you. Two mullet, two lamb, one venison. But Alan still doesn't raise his game. So Ivano's forced to serve his morel pasta with smoked pecans, crumbled stilton and Mediterranean herbs himself. It's rather strange, the chef coming and uh, collecting dishes and serving them. Um, but uh, they do seem to work all right, yeah. Have you got lead soles on your shoes? I don't believe so, Marco. You'll Thank be a little you slow. The chef's having to serve, Alan. Right. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Sarah was lovely, but I have to say the, there was a bit too much oil in the in my dish. Like I was trying to drain my pasta, just a bit too much. So how many is it? Two, three, four. Table so twelve is for four, so I know, and that's a three, so I know. So I've got three, four, seven starters. Service is in full swing, but Hamza's last-minute change of starter to double-cooked quail with a quail's egg is causing him problems. Still such a lot to do in such a very short amount of time. <laughs> I'm regretting picking half the stuff that I did, actually. Um, it's all a lot of prep work. I think if you're in your own restaurant and you sit down, I think you feel that you've got... You know, you got things around you, you're more comfortable here. It's a little bit different because not everything you want is to hand, but it's all right, we'll get there eventually. In a bid to catch up, Hamza's taken some shortcuts. It's not grilled. No. And there's no quail's egg? No. Tell me more. Uh, we just ran out of time, and I thought 
Okay. You ran out of time. I ran out of time. I forgave the uh, the quail's egg. It's banquet style, pre-cooked. Do you wish you'd been the past year now? <laughs> Chef, uh, Sam, service please. You good? Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Three, four, five. No egg. <laughs> We've been here about 20, 25 minutes, and um, we haven't seen the food yet. Well, we've seen it over there, but we haven't seen it there. So. The couples have to get all three courses out in one hour, 45 minutes, if they're to stand any chance of going through to the grand finale. One hour left. 23, the last table, Alan. Come on, please. Wakey, wakey, because we are behind, yeah? OK, we'll have to see you. I need, to do the, I need to do the main courses. How's it going, Ivano? So far, so good. Thank you. I see you're treating it like a banquet with the lamb. Pre cooking no, no, no. it. It's not ready. It's almost ready. No, it's not. It is. You just got to flash it. I'm going to flash Yeah, I'm going to. Of course. But you are by yourself. Alan's charming them. Yeah. It's what he does best. Not at the, not at the right time to charm, right, really, now, but. I need a tray. In the purple restaurant, James and Sarah are pressing on with their main courses. All right, Sarah, I'm doing uh, four venison and a lamb, yeah? You need to start clearing these tables, get it moving, yeah? Yes. All right, main courses. James knows he has to make six portions of his best end of lamb with aubergine caviar and a fricassee of sweetbreads. The lamb sweetbreads, they're like um, the thyroid gland, is it? We're going to use them to go with the uh, loin. But the other half of this confident couple seems to be getting confused. I thought you went with the lamb. Yeah, Did yeah, you? That's my yeah. fault. Thank you. And you were on the venison, weren't you? No, lamb. You were on the lamb as well. Okay. Yeah. I just said lamb. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I said lamb. Another salad. Mm. Yeah, quite salad. Can I have some olives while we're waiting? <laughs> Get some mm. bacon nuts. And bacon nuts. <laughs> both ordered the lamb, the lamb yeah. and uh, both, both the ordered venison. the venison. <laughs> Which looked nice, to be fair, but um, thought we ordered. it's not what we ordered. James, I need two more lamb, please. Sarah. These aren't venison, they're meant to be lamb. Oh, you are joking no. me, aren't you? No. You are, you are f joking. No, I'm not joking. But I haven't got ten lamb. I know, no. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. it. You can't change that one. Sarah, Sarah. So change those two. Okay, Sarah, you can tell Sarah, me you've only got one lamb. Sarah, you change Sarah, 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 don't panic. We can still get through, okay? Yes. Okay. So can I have two lamb now, please, James? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do three lamb, one venison now. Coming up... I only got two pieces of lamb, and uh, these guys have got three. The diners are dissatisfied. Oh, I, just really looking to this I am really disappointed, I'm being honest, I am. And Ivano turns up the pressure. Give me a minute. Alan, you've got to go now. In the battle kitchen, three couples are competing to serve 25 diners each in the second of the semi-finals. Hamza? Yes, sir. James? Ivano? Yes. 59 minutes left. They're fighting for a place in Marco Pierre White's grand finale. The purple and blue restaurants are on their main courses and on schedule. But in gold, it's a different story. We came in and we waited for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes before we get a drink. And, and actually, I'm the kind of person, if you give me a drink, I'll wait for a bit longer. But we'll just wait for the starter and just hope we get something to eat. Sam's all right, he needs to speed up with his collections. I know I'm not the fastest clothes, but he's got to speed up a little bit with that one. <laughs> hot, hot pan. The tagine of venison, which is a traditional Moroccan clay pot, and inside of it, you have poached pear and Moroccan dried fruit. Hamza, one table has still not been fed. The twice cooked quail, boiled and roast. Two tables, Marco. Get a bit slow, aren't you, boys? I need a three and a two, Hamza. This is a three. You're under pressure. Ah, uh, immensely. I can see that. There's no sweat on your forehead. <laughs> that tells me you're not working hard enough. Hamza and Sam are behind schedule, but at least the food is going down well. We had the quail with the uh, carrot and the orange. They were cooked really well. They were nice and moist. They weren't overcooked. No, they were good. The quail is delicious, but the orange blossom in it is a bit overpowering. Uh, I've just got two more starters to go, and then that's it. I'm done for the starters, and then it's all mains, all mains. Sam, what mains do you want? Tell me again. Sorry. In the purple restaurant, Sarah has taken too many orders for the main course of lamb. What do they have instead? Uh, they're just deciding. 
Did you not get told at the start of service how many portions the chef had of everything? Um, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to sort it out in a moment. You can't give them small portions. James has taken drastic measures to rectify her mistake. The lamb. Well, it's lovely. Serve with the chorizo and that should be lovely. Okay. I only got two pieces of lamb and uh, <laughs> these guys got three. Are you sure so you didn't eat it's because mine are no, smaller. I didn't eat it. I didn't it's because mine are smaller. No, they're not. They're the same they size. Are. Look at this. That's tiny. That's the same size. No. That's the same size. It makes me feel really sad that I'm uh, hungry. You know, that I'm pretty hungry. I'm really sorry, I know you've ordered three of the lamb. I'm really, we're not going to be able to do those for you. Okay. No, well, I'm not gonna, happy. I just have don't to really understand them, why you didn't know that you didn't have enough lamb when you took our water. But the, the red mallet instead, is that a bit so for the couscous in there? We did have an Armine lamb and we were kind of looking forward to that. And that was the combinations look perfect. And oh, we can I have a look at the menu again? Yeah, and we can yeah. look. I am really disappointed. I'm being honest. I am. I was really it looking for this lamb. I might ask for the venison with the lamb bits. I, I'm going to go for the okay, venison. Okay. I think again. I. I think Are you going to try? Because I'm really not a fan of pomegranate with with a meat. Two of them showing one menu. Three out of four of us ordered the lamb. Three out of four, four of us can't have the lamb, so we have to choose alternatives. But we've only just been told. We weren't yeah. told. Uh, literally five minutes before our main is about to arrive, and uh, so it's we quite all disappointing. Had our heart set on the lamb, didn't we? What they were trying to do was hide their mistake, serve small portions, but we stopped it. So the table behind me now can't have their three lamb. In this business, you have to be honest. Please sort your knife out. Keep it together, love. Keep it together, please, yeah? While Sarah tries to regain control in the restaurant, James is feeling the heat in the kitchen. Please remove the beetroot. Please remove the beetroot. Please remove the beetroot. Please remove the beetroot. Thank you very much. I'm trying to get through this. So I'm trying to do the best service I can, but obviously we've, we've really been given sort of difficult conditions, and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you later. 30 minutes to go. While award-winning front of house Sarah is struggling, in the blue restaurant, Alan's trying to raise his game. Come on, Alan. Please. The mullet, thank you. On the white side, the Chardonnay or Riesling, or we have a um, Shiraz or a Cabernet Shiraz. I thought that Alan really brought it all together in terms of the service. He's been really friendly, very a bit nervous, I think, but he seems to be doing a good job. It was extremely difficult the first 15 or 20 minutes, but I believe now that we're on the mains, that we're getting caught up and we will get everything out on time. I'm happy at the moment. We never know what's going to happen later. But their confidence might be misplaced. Oh, yeah, that's like, that's like a soup. Oh, my goodness. I think you should sell that. Yeah, definitely. Just drain it off. That's ridiculous. Maybe you should... In comparison to the starter, it's a bit better. And Ivano's baked red mullet fillets with sautéed samphire, fennel and rhubarb salad is getting lukewarm reviews. Excuse me, I had a bone. Um, I can't quite figure out what's going on with the flavours, to be honest. There's a lot of them, none of which I fully recognise. Marco has instructed his chef to serve sweetbreads with their lamb. Ivano's chosen to fry his like popcorn. And whatever the diners think, the dish definitely has one fan. If there's any popcorn, sweetbread popcorn left, can I have just a little few bites no, of it? No, you can't. OK. I haven't got enough. Right. In the gold restaurant, Hamza and Sam are finally serving the last of their starters. Here's your dish for you. Wow, so, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Most people have been served on starters. Um, I'm just... Hamza, I have the last starter order. OK, how many starters do you want, mate? Overall, I need nine. A four, a three and a two. Four, three, two. OK. Four, three, two, finished. And this has pushed them way behind with their mains. I'm uh, missing the gravy for the lamb, but I don't think it's going to be in time. I hope so. Full. That was for my gravy that I was supposed to be doing a little bit of jus, but... With what? For the lamb. So you sent lamb without jus? I did, yes, sir. Uh, why did you... Why did you uh... Sorry, sir. Can you get my tin uh, lemons? There's tin on the side. 
bum, 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 bum. In the purple kitchen, James is making alternative dishes for the ladies who wanted the lamb. So this. Enjoy your main courses. Thank you. Thank you. Bit of miscommunication there. I think um, we oversold some main courses, which obviously ate into our time. But hopefully, um, Sarah's managed to rectify. Uh, what's going on and, and, and save us as she, as she always does. 24 minutes left. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Thank you, James. Oh, thank you. Three lamb, two... Three, three lamb, lamb and three venison. And two mullet. One mullet. But I've got four tables on mine away now, so I'm trying to... Three, three venison, yeah? OK. It's finally dawning on Hamza how much work still needs to be done. I think the, 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 our preparation, you kind of, the time just goes so quick. I wouldn't say it's poor preparation, but it's, uh, you, you don't realise how quick it goes. Just time just runs away from you. But when it comes down to it, it's, it's tough, it's tough. I'm just hoping all my food tastes fantastic. I'm sure it does, actually. So we'll see. It's been a very pressurised situation. Um, I'm just trying to talk to the tables and explain the situations. Well, I think the presentation on the venison was lovely. Uh, I think the idea of pairing it with fruit was a brilliant idea. It's it's tender. I mean, I'm, I'm cutting it with a butter knife, and it's it's cooked like medium rare, which is how you want to cook venison. But there's a difference between medium rare and raw. Hi. Not cooked, probably. <laughs> I can see. I'm confused by it. Yeah, because it I should be rare. It should be rare, but I think maybe it needs to be cooked. Even though it's a tagine, it's a little not bit. Like a slow cooked dish. It is a slow cooked dish, but still, with this dish, we cook all the fruit for a long time, and the meat actually comes through. Ah, uh, okay, but not but quite it can, rare. But it can yeah. be cooked a little bit more. So yeah. I'll take it back through. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Hamza, I need to cook this some more. It's too rare. Turn this one up, up, up. Hamza, Marco. how many main courses left? I think seven or eight. Seven or eight, I think it is. I'd love to double check. You're not going to feed everybody, are you? Uh, should be able to get everybody done. You think you can serve seven more main courses and all your pastilla? I need the three tages. 20 minutes? Uh, I think so. I need the three tages and one fish and dessert whenever you can. Can I ask you a question? Someone's going to have to eat this. Yes, I know, Mark. If you feed everybody. Let's hope they don't have a pallet. But for the pallets in purple, there's a pleasant surprise. It tastes wonderful, actually, and I'm actually very pleased. So you had a nice starter and you've had a nice main course. I'm very satisfied. Yes. How's your mullet, madam? This is lovely. This is and I'm this happy lovely. because I didn't Are you shocked the by the standard? I'm not shocked. I just think it's how it should be. Yeah. Good. I'm currently eating the medicine, um, and um, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I must say, it's, uh, I feel it's lacking in a little bit of flavour. like it a bit more robust, a bit more gamey, maybe. I thought the starter was um, pretty ordinary. The, um, the venison was, uh, again, rather bland. Um, have you had any problems? The, the venison wasn't greatly received. Really? They, yeah, they really liked the lamb. The lemon meringue tart for dessert here. Regardless of the mixed reviews, James and Sarah push on with their desserts. I think another... I think I'm halfway there on desserts. James, three tart, please, next. Yeah, stay there. And how many more covers tart total? I'll, I'll get back to you. Just keep going with them, I think. James, can I take a sliver? Yeah, knock yourself out. Nice curd. Pastry's OK. No problem. Hamza's recooked his venison. There you go. That's cooked better, Thank yeah. You. No problem. But there's a problem with the red mullet. It doesn't look great, does it? No, it doesn't. It's um, I didn't expect to find so many bones. You know. How many did you find? Quite a few. Nasty. <laughs> so yours was undercooked. Yeah. And yours was filled with bones. <laughs> I think the spicing was good. So there's some interesting stuff with the spicing, but generally not not that great with the service. The spicing is nice, actually. Yeah. Good night, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> 
15 minutes of service remaining. With the end in sight, Ivano's determined not to ease off the pressure. Alan, don't serve wine. Yes. Alan, I'm coming. Wine, Alan. Right, what, what are you now? There's no cutlery on the tables. What do you mean? I haven't got any in the back. There's no spoons. What, what do you mean? You have no spoons. Just give me a minute. Alan, you got to go now. Alan, are you keeping count who you got, yeah? Everybody, come on, go. You got three? Anywhere? Uh, oh, one. Come no, on. I haven't. What you got next? Coming up, Hamza reaches boiling point. It's, uh, it's taking a while. Stressed, stressed. I'm feeling stressed. And Marco names the winning couple. I think we're going home. In the second semi-final, three couples are on the last leg of an intense service, battling it out for a place in Marco's grand finale. Two of the three restaurants are on desserts, but for one, it's touch and go as to whether they'll even begin to serve their third course. I think a few other people are way ahead of me now, but I've still got time. I'll get most of the desserts out, if not all. Where am I going to? I don't know, you need to know the, the table, Sarah, not me. Come on. Sorry, what is, what is this? It's a, um, 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 pistachio, um, was, uh, sorry, just give me one moment, sorry. What is it, Ivana, what is it? It's the chocolate and these with pistachio mousse, come on. And passion fruit, you know. Yes, I do. Chocolate de Lise with pistachio mousse. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see the main courses. Wow, one is still two main courses. I guess I'm doing better there, but hmm, excellent. James and Sarah are on a roll, getting out their lemon meringue tart. Two and two, James, please. Next. I would have liked it to be a little bit more lemony. It was quite sweet. I wasn't that keen on the meringue topping. Hamza and Sam finally send out the first of their desserts, but some diners still haven't got their mains. Where's my last uh, uh, fifth? It's not, I can't cook them. Five minutes tonight. Uh, two wait. minutes, I'll just tell them I'm not going to bring them. I can't. Can well, you please bring the fish anyway, just for the guy. Huh? Can you just do the fish anyway? Yeah, yeah, the I'm cooking it. I'm cooking it. So I, it's, uh, it's taking a while. Stress, stressed. I'm feeling <laughs> stressed. And the stress levels are about to get even higher. They're not cooked, these two dishes, the customer's saying they're raw, so let me know what you want to do. Right, OK. Five minutes left. <laughs> Get out of the way. Tell me what you want now. Guys, my utmost apologies. I'm so, so sorry about that. Please enjoy. Five and there's four, so that's nine. Nine? I didn't even... Well, they haven't had any yet. Four minutes to send the last dessert, yeah? Cook, 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 cook. Play, Sam. The last four? Yeah? Yeah. And we are there. Done. Service is over. At the end of service, Hamza and Sam only served two of their desserts, and the ones they did serve were undercooked. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize on the delay and your dessert's not coming out. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know. It was just. Uh... To be honest with you, I think we. Stay as a team from the beginning, we finish as a team. I'm pleased, very pleased that we served everybody. And it's a teamwork, and I think we've done uh, pretty well. Well, I think so. It was very interesting hearing the comments shouted across at me Alan, where are you? Where are you? About a hundred times, but I was trying I to. I need get orders. This wasn't great. It wasn't great, was it? I think we're going home. The couples have given it their all, starting with a demanding prep and pushing through an exhausting service. It's time for Marco to deliver his verdict. You've worked hard all day. Some of you, not hard enough. James. You sold nine lamb, and you only had six. You conspired with each other. Smaller portions. Hamza, you worked very hard. Your understanding of spices is very good. You didn't attack the service. 
that's why you failed to feed everybody. Ivano, you work hard. You care. When I first met you, Alan, you confessed to me that you're incompetent. Tonight, you showed me that you were charming at the table. You were gentle with the customers. You could charm the birds out of the trees. Whether you could feed them is another question. It's not just about service. It's not just about food. It's about working as a team, not an individual. The couple joining me in the grand finale is James and Sarah. Why did I choose James and Sarah? It was a slicker operation. As simple as that. I'm disappointed by it. They deserve it, so Mark is the judge. But yeah. I believe that we see each other in a different light now, and although we've worked together for eight years, we've never worked together as closely as this, and uh, therefore we shall take this away and continue to build upon oh, that. Definitely. Gutted. I'm feeling absolutely gutted now. We did well to get this far, I think, and uh, from now we just, uh, it's the future now, and we move on from there, really. It just felt like the, the whole world was falling around me uh, in that service. If the next service is anything like this or worse, then James and I could be getting divorced before we get married. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, three more couples take on the battle kitchen. And for one waiter, it's the toughest challenge of his life. So he's actually been picked up by an ambulance and just taken off to hospital to get a little bit of oxygen. Of all days, it's happened this morning. I'm not going to let the side down. I'm not going to let the fish club name down. So we're going to go ahead, get this done, see what comes out of it. Welcome to James and Steve's menu. Um, I'm afraid James isn't here tonight. I'm Steve. I'm cooking for you. I should have been serving you. Kitchen Wars is back next Thursday as the new series continues at 8. And we see the start of Spencer Matthews' search for love tomorrow night when he packs his bags in Chelsea and moves into the rather swanky bachelor pad. Don't miss the new series at 10. Next tonight, it's brand new, extraordinary people.